Before going any further with this video, I want to state a few things. I am in no way, shape or form going to be attacking anyone on a personal standpoint. My views on the topics I will be talking about today are not necessarily shared by my community or the people I associate with. This, of course, also means any form of vendetta is to be avoided. Hello everyone, this is Sam and since the previous video on the trading community and its drama was quite well received, in today's video I will be talking about another such topic. Lately, I have been hearing some pretty bad things about a certain person and what they are up to, and that is what I will be going over. Let's start by restringing some instruments and uncovering the truth behind the biggest ascension of a content creator in our small community. For the past two years, this fellow Frenchman has been met with great success, possibly undergoing the fastest growth a Guild Wars 2 channel has ever seen. Yet, everything isn't necessarily as amazing as it can seem, and that is why I'm making this video today. I will be going over the story topic by topic instead of the more conventional timeline format. But before all this gets unraveled, let's listen to the intro. There is a before and an after on Cellofrax's channel. Up until early 2018, most of his videos were centered around his PvP gameplay on his main class, the Squishy Elementalist, and its eventual specializations. At this point, he was an average Guild Wars 2 content creator, with a few hundred subscribers getting between 1000 and 3000 views per upload. This is usually what can be seen on more vs World channels and their player vs player equivalent, as montages are quite well enjoyed by the community. Yet, unlike some other players like Holtz, Vance and the such, who remain dedicated to the game mode, Cellofrag decided to make a major switch with his content and more specifically, in his branding. In early 2018, he started going for some more clickbait content, such as opening of chests and other containers, small giveaways and eventually some guides on gold making. Now, in Guild Wars 2, there is a major fascination towards the act of gold making, much unlike any other game I have come across. If there is anything that brings in the views, generates exposure and grows a community, it is exactly that. Then again, for a game referred to as Fashion Wars, where dyes, skins and rare cosmetics are heavily thought after, all this falls under common sense. It is impossible to know exactly when the shift in content operated, as there was a mix and match of World vs World compilations and giveaways, but quite certainly we can set the release of his first big gold guide in late September 2018 as a turning point. He was already organizing regular giveaways of legendary weapons and other expensive items, but there was one thing that significantly changed the way all of this was set up, and that was the introduction of Patreon in the equation. For the people who are unaware, Patreon is a platform on which a content creator can be supported by their community, with recurring monthly donation of a few dollars. The initial goal of this initiative is for creators for getting too little ad revenue on YouTube or the ones who need more support as their creations require a lengthier time frame for the production to find some side revenue and be able to continue developing their channels without having to resort to clickbait, company sponsorships or being part of a network. In the case of Cellofrag, his regular usage of copyrighted music prevented him from getting conventional ad revenue under the YouTube policies. Turning to Patreon was the natural step up to be able to reach an equilibrium between the time spent making his guides, which are very nicely edited, and getting a proper return for that personal investment. Indeed, Patreon allows you to opt for a classic remuneration model, where you receive monetary help every month, or to get said money upon the release of a piece of content as predefined with your community. But what really sets Patreon apart from a Twitch or a YouTube sub is the way you can choose to reward your supporters. From private picture sets to signed postcards sent to you every month, there are all kinds of things you can get from subbing to someone's Patreon. But in the case at hand, an entirely different system was built from the ground up. Indeed, for the modicum of $30, you could originally get a random Black Lion skin, and if you pledged upwards to $150, you could ask for a legendary of your choice 
bar the most expensive eternity. On top of that, any pledge above $15 guaranteed you a ghostly infusion. As anyone can surmise, this was very borderline towards Arlenet's policies. And despite resistance from the offender, quoting emails from the studio allegedly allowing this practice, it got swiftly removed after a group effort to convince the interested parties of the dangers of such an offer. And thus, the Patreon as we know it today exists. The underlying idea is that supporting the contents anywhere from 5 euros to 150 euros will enroll you in a monthly giveaway where a large number of precursors and a few legendaries are offered. On top of that, the higher tiers at 30 euro and 150 euros also have their own rare infusion giveaways for a total monthly value shy of 100,000 gold. Where it is a bit more concerning, however, is that not all the promised content is being delivered the way it's advertised to be. The main advantage of the lower tier is a 48 hour head start on the channel's guide, but with the release cycle taking upwards to a year, it is not certain how great a 48 hour head start would really turn out to be. If we instead look at the giveaway side of things, despite the advertised 50 to 60% chance of winning, the heavy publicity being done on social media, through a pretty aggressive online advertising campaign, draws so many new subs in that it gets closer to 40% or even lower in reality. This means that you will need about 3 months to get a Colossus, or a Howl, while you could get both for the same amount, even at the lowest tier. And that is, if everything is being sent as it is said to be. Not all the winners are on this call, so there is no way to confirm if the winners are legit individuals, and since not all winners post screens of their prices, the whole thing could very well be a bluff. While I would not claim to have conclusive evidence on that matter, I will cast some doubt on the whole situation, since at some point we confirmed among the infusion holders of multiple months that the supply on the trading post came our way and that nobody was selling to him, yet somehow there were still upwards to 6 Chakak sacks being given away in a single month. Another shady thing is that while the main reward for the 30 euro tier is a specific chat with tailored gold making and general viewers to advice, surprisingly, not all of the patrons in this tier are on the Discord server. Finally, another thing that was pointed out to me was the way re-rolling is being handled. Upon a winner not reacting after 3 weeks, the items are entered within the next giveaway pool but not as extras on top of the regular giveaway being advertised. This means that the actual value of the giveaway would be lower than what we estimated earlier. But beyond that, the biggest issue is no other than the illegality of such a giveaway system. As it is currently being held, with a monetary barrier for entry, running for multiple months, and it being very publicized, it goes against the French law. I'm not saying this as though it were just another flag being raised, as prior cases of similar lotteries have been cracked down upon by the French justice system and were judged as money laundering schemes. After this rather long segment about the Patreon page, it is time to go back to the actual content. More specifically, what made his YouTube channel what it is today. The content that has established him as a trading post guru in the eyes of the more financially literate. Indeed, we will now dissect his gold making videos, and more specifically, the one that has most changed how he is perceived among his peers, his incredible trading post guide. First of all, the video's thumbnail is vastly misleading, as the methods described later on the video aren't what led to the six figure wallet being shown. Indeed, the guide opens up with the statement that you only need 50 gold to get started with either flipping or investing, the latter being referred to as speculating throughout the video. Later on in said video, the term prediction is used instead of forecast. I still to this day recall one of my previous bosses telling me that mysticism has no place in a science related field like finance. The guy that keeps on giving with the sentence Black Lion Skins are my favorite items to speculate on. There is no speculation involved when the whole system is built on availability or the absence thereof tied to a specific release cycle. Instead, speculation involves a forecast of a major change in player behavior, induced or not, by a change in the game itself, that would have an impact on a specific faucet or a sink. The only proper speculators I know of I could name on the figures of one hand, and none of them would phrase their advice as such. The rest of the video doesn't exactly make up for that original blunder, as seemingly basic advice is tossed around, such as 
Sell the skins you bought one to two months after they go up to three tickets apiece. This leans too much on the safer end and denotes a lack of understanding of the skin cycles which could be remedied via a thorough analysis of the black light chest. I will refrain from commenting on the speculatory behavior regarding Wednesday presence, yet I must remind you all watching this that despite the claims made in the video, there are no items that are secure for beginners and more experienced traders alike. Any item can get stuck on the trading post, and what matters is diversifying to be able to bounce back were there to be an issue with your investments. Then, we get to the flipping part of the guide. The statement that it only takes a few hours up to a few days is correct, but there are no good explanations as to why. Afterwards, where there should have been an explanation on volume, return on investment, and careful picking of items to flip based on tangible data, the guide stops at the mention of spread and the promise that it all sells fast anyways. The guide finally advertises a supposedly amazing daily routine of looking at legendaries to decide on which to flip. Flipping legendaries isn't anything a player hoping for a beginner guide should attempt as they are seldom sold to buy orders and there is a massive risk to getting them stuck on a sell listing. I'm not making anything up, as it is backed by data from trading history on websites such as GeoRCBLTC.com. In my opinion, what is mentioned in this guide can work, but it is not good advice for a beginner, nor anyone who isn't in there for a massive gamble. Speaking of advice, there is another place where it is ever so scarce, and that would be the 30 Euro Patreon exclusive channel where one can supposedly get premium advice and answers from the man himself. In the olden days, in order to inquire about the advice that he boasted to give in that special place, the Trading and Exchange Commission, which is totally a name made up for this occasion, paid up and glanced at the content of the Discord. About the long days of inactivity in the channel and our few yet precise questions remaining unanswered, we also scrolled up and realized that the channel really was lacking in its inputs. The experience went under a reiteration later in 2019 and the results were just as bad, if not worse. As we confirmed that trading post APIs weren't used in the least, with paper and ink being the preferred method to record flipping. There was also a mention of Patreon earnings being used to cover for the giveaways when gold was lacking. While this isn't anything bad in and of itself, it does severely undermine the value of the advice. If I was asked to describe what I think of Cellofrag, and trust me, I have been asked this more than just a few times, I would present him for who he really is in my eyes. A very good online marketer, well versed in the art of clickbait and overhyping. However, once that facade is peeled off, the content is lacking in depth, and there is no follow-up on many unfit promises, and beyond the chances to enter a giveaway, the rest of the patron support is a bit on the lower end. Yet, his popularity keeps shooting up, which can probably be related to his very solid use of online advertising and of every social network as a funnel towards his patron campaign. If I truly wanted to make gold in Gears 2, I would instead rely on other personalities and communities, the likes of Overflow, BLTC, or my own. Once again, I wish to remind you all that this is in no way a personal attack, but a light-hearted critic of a fellow content creator, who did go a bit too far on some matters. In no way, shape, or form should you twist my words as a form of hate speech, nor should you take pitchforks towards his palace to tear down its walls. That will be it today. For me, I wish to greatly thank my fellow barons who helped me in this investigation and the people who made me jump into the making of this video. But the ones I want to thank the most are the people who support me and actually made the choice to pick me, the smaller guy with the more complicated videos, over the more glossed up content creator. If you wish to support me, my links are in the description and if you believe I am wrong somewhere in this video, you are more than welcome to come and debate me in the comment section. And now, I wish every single one of you some happy trading and to get rich.